Okay guys, it's drill time. Now I want to talk about the purpose and the reason why we do drills. Um, remember, drills are different than scenarios. There's lots of good write-ups out there. I know Mike Pannone just did one. You can check out him um, and read his theory on that. I agree a thousand percent. When we're working scenarios, we're building subconscious actions of tactical repetition, okay? When we're working a drill, we're working on the processes that are needed to achieve a goal. The goal is being able to fight, but we have to work on the simple things, the little things first, the law of just a little bit. And what are those little things that we need to know to be able to have a higher hit probability and to be able to go into a tactical environment and be able to do these things subconsciously. So every time you see us doing a drill, it's not just to run it fast, it's not just to shoot at three yards, It's there's a purpose behind it. So I'll explain a little bit about this one today. Um, this, drill, this drill is called the Venti 100 shot, okay, it's a little stronger than coffee. Um, I typically do about a four shot in the morning, but when I go to the range, I want to get uh, the best workout that I possibly can and be able to hit all those processes in my training. This is 100 rounds, that's why I call it the Venti 100. So 100 rounds is pretty accessible for most people to go to the range, but instead of just setting up a paper target down range and blowing holes in it, we can actually have a, a process here to improve ourselves and help us climb the ladder of excellence. So when we get in a training rut, uh, maybe it's because we're focused on the goal too much. We're not focusing on the processes that are needed to achieve the goals. So that's what I'll show you here. This is my personal workout that I do when I come to the range by myself. This is what I start with, the Venti 100 shot, and then I can move into all the other stuff that I, that I would typically practice. Okay, so um, here's a quick snapshot on it. I've got two targets up right now. I've got my four-dot drill we typically use uh, for carbine, carbine zeroing. It's kind of a zero dot for carbine at 50 meters. And I've got our 25 one inch circle field's eye finger target. Now, what I did is I took the seven fundamentals and combined them into three core groups because the human brain likes to learn in threes. So stance and grip, right? Well, what the hell does that mean? Let's talk about the feel, kinesthetic awareness, proprioception, all the science and stuff that we put into it in our D5 classes. We're breaking it down and we're trying to make it as simple to understand as possible without turning into some neuroscience uh, discussion. So I will isolate a lot of different things in this drill. Now, we're shooting at three yards, and a lot of people say, well, it's easy to shoot at three yards. So if you think it's easy, I challenge you to come out here, print these targets off our website on the blog page, put them up, and see how difficult it can be. But what's great about being able to just shoot right here at three, and of course I can add difficulty by moving back to four or even five yards, on a one inch circle, you can diagnose a lot of your problems. You can see path of least resistance. You can see uh, issues with the grip. You can see issues with your eyes. You can see issues with your trigger control instead of trying to do it at 25 and going, I think that's what it was. So we start up here. We start up here in the morning and then we move back to 25 later in the afternoon or later in your training segment. So what I'll do is I'm gonna start with step one simple acclimation of recoil. Because how many times we come out to the range, we draw that first round and we're jittery, maybe we had too much espresso, and uh, we wanna feel that, sub that spatial line in our mind. So if I extend this gun out, point it at the target, and it fires, can I put it back down to that same line that it started? And feel that. So in order to feel it, I'm gonna ask you to do something, you can try it if you want. Um, this is a safe environment, you should set up a safe environment you're training. I'm gonna tell you to close your eyes. We're gonna take out our eyes out of the equation here. So I'm gonna fire five shots right in the center in the dragonfly on the four dot drill. Five shots only. I'm gonna aim in, get a good side on my sight pitcher, and then what I'm gonna do is fire those five in a nice slow cadence, okay? And watch what happens to the group with my eyes closed. Okay, so that's telling me that I'm feeling the line in my, my head, I'm closing my eyes, I'm really feeling that line come back to center under recoil. And I'm not thinking about what my eyes are seeing, so it's allowing me to really process the feel of the body. Okay, do I have a good forward lean? Do I have leverage? Do I have all those things happening in a good grip? Okay, again, a good grip, we could talk about it for hours. Um, it's not as simple as just holding a gun. We use simple principles that I'll share with you here in a second. The next thing I'm gonna do is work the big black dots with rhythm. Now the human brain, the human body loves rhythm. And I, if I ask everybody out there, does anybody hate music? I bet nobody said no. Okay, everybody loves rhythm, everybody loves music. If you're the guy that says you hate music, you're probably the dude in your car 
jamming out, right? So what we're gonna do is a one through five slow cadence. And this is the key, and this is where in our, our brain mapping studies, our neuro and biofeedback studies that we do with our sports performance doctors, or our psychologists, we find that in shooting, it's all about rhythm. Okay? Whether you're getting into a position, whether you're drawing, whether you're trying to time that finger in your brain and hit the target, it's all about rhythm. So I'm going to start with a 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, and that's how I'm going to shoot it. And then I'll, I'll speed up ever so slightly on the next circles. Eyes are open, and I'll count out loud. 1000, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1000. So I start slow and I can even feel there's a rhythm off there. You can kind of see that there's a glitch I think between three and four because I'm not connecting my frontal lobe and focusing on what I need to focus on. So I'm going to go to the second circle and I'm going to increase it. One and two and three and four and five. And you got to say this to yourself. You got to get these like incantations going if you will. You got to say it out loud. Don't be afraid to communicate, especially if you carry a gun on a daily basis because communication is important, right? One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. Okay, so there is a little bit faster pace. Now I'll do number three and I'll say one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. My goal is to keep it inside the black at the three yard line. That's my restraint. If I start coming out, what kind of problems are happening? And that's where we would self-diagnose at that point in time. Now, I'm uh, going from round 20 to 25. Okay, I'm already at 25 rounds now, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. 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 Okay, and that's what I'm looking for. Staying in the black, good rhythm. One, two, three, four, five. Finger never came off the trigger. I'm self-diagnosing. And there's my acclimation and rhythm drill in one sheet of paper. That's 25 rounds. Now let's move to the field's eye finger target. Line one. You will fire 15 rounds if you want. You can fire two. You can only fire one if you want. It's not about the drill. It's about what you can do with it, okay? So I'm just sharing my workout. On line one, I'm going to focus on two very important principles in the grip, okay? The hands, the body. I'm going to get into a good stance and kind of lean into it. I'm not going to get into this funky bending over stuff. I'm just going to lean forward. And I'm looking at, number one, is friction. Do I have good 100% contact all around the gun? Am I feeling that gun? Do I have good pliability, okay? Like if you're mushing clay or dough or something, is it sticky? That's good friction, okay? The second thing is leverage. Do I have leverage on the gun? So if I was to, to, to put my hands together and press here, and these two points on the back of the gun, as I extend out, you'll see you get that leverage as you go out to the target. That leverage is important to maintain the gun in your hand under recoil. Because how many times have you seen somebody or yourself have shot, boom, you fire and your hand comes off the gun. Or even just so slightly, boom, you fire and you re-milk your grip as we call it. Boom, you milk, boom, you milk. Just add a little bit more leverage. Not a death grip, just leverage. And so those are the two things that I'm focusing on right now. And I'll fire 15 rounds. I'm not worried about sights. I'm not worried about trigger control. I'm isolating the processes to achieve the goal. Now I'll take my time. This is a marksmanship drill. Good friction, good leverage as I come out. If I need to take a mental break, relax, no tension, come back out, do the next circle. Okay, I'm really feeling for my hands. I'm really putting my eyes and my brain into my hands here to make sure everything's working out right. I can speed it up a little bit just to maintain good control to make sure I'm maintaining good control as long as I don't come outside the circle. Okay. So that's line one. I'm going to top off my mags and uh, we'll get on line two. All right, line two. Line two, I'm going to focus on my eyes. I've established a good friction and leverage grip. That feels good. It looks good. If I need to work on that more, I might spend the whole sheet just doing that if you have the ammo and you have the time. But if I don't, I'm going to move into my eyes. This is where I'm going to do a hard sight picture. 
clear front sight, clear front sight, clear front sight. And I'll say that to myself every time I pull the trigger. Grips established, not really worried about trigger control. I'm putting my brain into my eyes, okay? Clear front sight, clear front sight, clear front sight, clear front sight. Take a mental break if you need to, because tension will start to kick in and we get that mental static electricity. Break it off and then finish. Good friction, grip is set. Clear front sight, clear front sight. And that's line two, clear front sight only. Line three, I'm gonna switch it up with my eyes because as you know under a body alarm response, sometimes you may not have a front sight. Somebody walks around a corner, they put a gun or a knife in your face and you have made the decision through the, the risk formula to pull the gun out and engage. It's gotta be quick. And because you have that blood flow, that increased blood flow to the center field of vision, that tunnel vision effect, you're not gonna see. It's impossible under that critical stress moment to see your front sight because this is more important. This is the threat and your body's doing that because it's a natural defense mechanism. So I train both ways. And again, it's kind of controversial. However, ask people that have been in gunfights if they've seen their sights and then tell them to break the story down to you. If it's a head threat, I might see my sights because it's a smaller target and something switches in my brain. Long path and short path of information will tell me I need to do something now. If I walk into a room and a dude's got a suicide vest on, I see that, huh, I might have to go to front sight to get a clear shot or hostage scenario or maybe I got into the situation, I took a deep breath, I focused, I see the guy, clear front sight, clear front sight. That's a cognitive effort, okay? But we shoot like this because under a subconscious action of engaging a gun and firing somebody, firing somebody up, I want to train both ways. So now I'm going to have a hard circle focus. So my focus plane is shifted down, down range, right? My eyes are the camera lens and my brain is the film. So at this point, I want to see a clear circle. You got to focus. You got to really, you got to really not cheat yourself here, okay? You don't need to tape up your sights or any of that shit because you're not gonna have tape on your sights in a gunfight. You look through it. Just like if I took my hand and put it in front of my face, I'm looking at you, the camera right now, and the camera is completely clear. That's all I'm doing with the gun. So again, I'll say to myself, clear circle, clear circle, clear circle. Clear circle, clear circle, clear circle. Okay. Now I'm moving a little fast. If you can't shoot that fast, slow it down. Or if I want to just set a new goal for myself and only have one bullet hole, then I'll focus for one bullet hole. And I'll start to do that here in a second. But as you can see, you'll be, well, you might actually be surprised when you do this is just having a hard target focus, a hard threat focus. You'll be shocked at how much better you can actually shoot. Okay. And this even works out at distance, about 13 to 15 meters for me. I'll start to see my brain switch over and go, Travis, don't take this shot without using your sights because I've been doing it for so long. I know that point on the range. I know that point in reality because I'm situationally aware. I'm spatially aware. And by practicing the processes between what the eyes do, you have that target accommodation, as we call it, which is a visual expert terminology of infinite number of focus shifts all the way out to a threat or back to your gun. Okay, so think about that. Line number four. Now we're thinking about the finger. How do we pull a trigger straight to the rear? Well, the answer is that you can't, especially if you're running a fulcrum trigger. Glock trigger, striker fired, MMPs, you name it, they're all out there. It's on a fulcrum. So that pin is at the top and the trigger goes like this as you pull it back to the rear, okay? Goes back to the rear. Now, if I got a 1911, you don't have a fulcrum, you got a trigger bow, so it slides in a box. So that trigger can move straight to the rear, but you can't pull it straight to the rear because guess what now you have? You got a fulcrum in your finger as well. So you got a pin here. So now we have our finger going back into the side and we have a trigger coming back and up in a fulcrum situation like this Glock here. So you are constantly adjusting as you pull that trigger thinking that you're pulling it straight to the rear. So here's the key. I always say 90, 10, finish flat. 90, get rid of the pre-travel. You're at the predictable wall of pressure now. So when you press that next 10%, what should happen? Gun should break. Shot should fire, but you should finish flat as you press through that 10%. Finish flat. So 
where the, the finger typically does this, it curls. If you can get your finger to some inchworm like that instead, it won't move as much. And this is the law of just a little bit. If you start slapping a trigger, this is what happens. If you get a good trigger press, an inchworm, and go fast, this is what happens. So when people say, how do you shoot so fast and keep your finger on the trigger? It's just understanding straight lines are strong. Finish flat. Feel the edges of the trigger as you fire. Feel the left and the right edge as I finish flat. So I'll focus on that now. Finish flat. 90-10, finish flat. 90-10, finish. 90-10, finish flat. 90-10, Ninety ten, finish. Now focusing on that finger. Every single shot. Don't let your mind get distracted. If you get distracted, stop. Take a mental break. Start the process again. Okay? Pretty simple. Line five. Line five, we've got 15 more rounds to go. So now I'm gonna work the draw in because as you can see, I've been working from the relax ready position, okay? This is not relaxed, this is tense. Relax, relaxed ready. Now what I'm gonna do, simply go from the draw. 15 independent draws, one shot fired. Putting it all together. See it, feel it, press. The goal is to get the gun up not touching the trigger until I need to, which is about in this area here. And I connect the elbow with the trigger finger. So as I press out, bang, bang. If you need a quick up close shot, you want that shot to go off as soon as you're at extension, connect this. You shouldn't be touching your trigger down here because you're not at mid extension yet, okay? You shouldn't be doing it back here, you shouldn't be touching here. You come up, finger starts to curl in and touch and press on full extension. That's what I'm trying to shoot for here. At the same time, putting together my grip friction right now that's what I got in a gunfight is what I got right here so if you got a low grip you got a low grip so you want to fix that friction bring the hands together leverage set see what I need to see finish flat all with the draw Notice I'm trying to just keep it in the circle. I'm working out about a 1.20 draw to first shot, I would imagine. And I'm focusing on what I need to do, okay? I'm following up as well. You notice I'm not dropping the gun. I'm shooting and I'm following up with the next sight picture. Some of you are probably asking, well, this is just a drill and you should be searching and assessing. Again, stop with the tactics bullshit. This is a drill, this is a process. Just like if you go out to football and you played football or any sport, the coach didn't make you train like you play the game. He made you work on the processes that are in order to achieve the goals during the game. You're working on speed, hand-eye coordination. You got a quarterback, they're gonna make him throw ball 500 times before he's allowed to come into the scrimmage as long as he's biomechanically throwing the ball correctly, ball's rolling off, his hips are turned, everything, everything in the gate is correct, feet are right, then he can go into the scrimmage, okay? The scenario at that point to then prep us for reality. So that's what I'm working on here. I know I can search and assess. My eyes move at a thousand degrees a second. We'll show you that here in a little bit. You can see I get into a very deliberate practice. I isolate, I kind of only focus on what I need to do. I'm not moving around, I'm not jittering. I am doing consistent repetitions very deliberately. Every single time I'm not moving until I'm done and need to take a mental break like I am right now talking to you guys. Now I'll finish it up. All right, 
So the last couple rounds, I'm self-diagnosing. I'm going faster and faster until I start to come apart. That is a good thing. That's called a failure point reached. When you get there, figure out what it is. Why did I shoot low? First one, I wasn't at full extension. I was gaming it, trying to just shoot with no clear front sight because I'm going faster, right? I'm still in a three quarter inch group. I'm okay with that, but that's not my intended point impact. So I'd want to change that up, okay? So there's the Venti 100 shot drill. You can see acclimation again, eyes closed, five rounds. You can do 10 rounds. You can do 15 rounds if you got the ammo and the time and then start moving into your rhythm. Count to yourself out loud. So you can almost distract yourself slightly by counting and you'll see how much better you shoot when you actually talk to yourself instead of really focusing and focusing and missing it and wondering why you didn't. Just trust yourself, let it go, okay? And that's a very important thing is a trusting mindset. Then move into the 25 dot, feels eye finger. Isolate, isolate, isolate. Hands, eyes, finger, start putting it together, get into the draw. So there's something for you just to, uh, to give you what I do, my personal workout, before I go out now and start doing the rest of my scenario-based training, okay? Don't forget, work on the processes. Work on the processes to achieve the goal. Stay sharp, be safe. I'm Travis Haley. Thanks for joining me. Good?